Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on Introduction to Environmental Biotechnology. Today we will explore how biological processes can be used to address environmental problems and promote sustainable development. I am your presenter Dr. Ru Javed. Now I'll start with my introduction. I am an assistant professor at Dow College of Biotechnology a prestigious college of Dow University of Health Sciences. Now we will start of the learning objective of the session. So at the end of the session, we will be able to understand the basic concept and terminologies of the environmental biotechnology. Finally, we will be able to describe the potential of different microorganisms that have been used in different environmental biotechnology processes. So we will learn all these aspects at the end of this session. Now what is environmental biotechnology? Environmental biotechnology is the application of various biological and chemical principles to solve environmental problems. This includes the use of organisms, enzymes, and other biological agents to remove pollutants from the water sources, degrade toxic substances in the environment, and create new material and products. Now, why is environmental biotechnology is needed? The first point is cleanup of contaminant sites. Environmental biotechnology provides innovative and effective approaches for the cleanup of contaminant sites. Microorganisms can be used to degrade a variety of contaminants, including organic pollutants, heavy metals, and radioactive materials. Bioremediation techniques can be used to treat contaminant soil, water, and air, and can provide cost-effective and sustainable solutions for cleanup. The next point is the waste management. Environmental biotechnology provides solutions for the management of waste, including the treatment of waste water and the production of biofuels for organic waste materials. Microorganisms can be used to break down organic waste and convert it into useful products such as biofuels, fertilizers and bioplastic. The next approach is the sustainable agriculture. Environmental biotechnology can be used to improve the agricultural practices by enhancing soil health and promoting sustainable crop growth. Microorganisms can be used to fix nitrogen and other essential nutrients in the soil, increase crop yields, and reduce the need for synthetic fertilizer and pesticides. The next point is the climate change mitigation. Environmental biotechnology provides solutions for mitigating the impacts of climate change, including, including the development of biofuels and the sequestration of carbon in the soil and plants. Bioreactors can be used to capture and utilize the carbon dioxide, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and promoting sustainable energy production. The last point is the environmental monitoring. Environmental biotechnology provides tools for monitoring environmental quality and detecting environmental contaminants. Biosensors can be used to detect the presence of contaminants in water, air, and soil, providing real-time information for decision-making and remediation efforts. As we know that environmental biotechnology uses biological processes to solve environmental problems. The goal is to promote sustainable development and reduce pollution and waste. There are four key areas of focus, including water and waste water treatment, bioenergy production, biomaterials, and bioremediation. So let's start with the first key area, which is water and waste water treatment. Wastewater treatment using microbe is an environment-friendly technique. It focuses on the exploitation of microorganisms as decontaminating tools to treat polluted wastewater in a cost-effective method as compared to chemical treatments. For example, we can use activated sludge treatment and constructed wetlands. Next is the bioenergy production. 
bioenergy can be generated from various form of biomass including wood agriculture and livestock residues short rotation forest plantations energy crop the organic components of municipal solid waste and other organic waste streams it is a reliable so far source of renewable energy it emits little or no greenhouse gas emission and is carbon neutral for example we use waste to produce biogas or use algae to produce biofuels next is the biomaterial biomaterials are the materials that have been that have been designed to interface with biological system for the treatment augmentation or replacement of biological functions biological waste that at a, that end up in water bodies as well as in landfills are the sources of new biomaterials and products that ultimately reduces the waste for example effluent source of animal and plant derived proteins bioceramics and polysaccharides or using bacteria to create bioplastics the most important part of environmental biotechnology is bioremediation bioremediation is the use of biological processes to remove or degrade environmental pollutants such as oil spill pesticides and heavy metals this process involves the use of microorganisms such as bacteria fungi and algae to transform toxic substances into less harmful or non toxic forms for example bacteria can break down oil spills or using fungi to break down pesticides up till now we have covered three main topics so just to memorize these topics we uh, have a little activity which is true and false so the first statement is biotechnology can be used to remove pollutant from contaminated soils and ground water as we have learned that biotechnology is very useful to bioremediate the contaminated soil so this statement is said to be true next statement is microorganisms cannot be used to clean up contaminated soil or water sources as we have learned in previous slides that microorganisms are used to bioremediate the contaminated sites and we have learned that different bacteria are used to break down different toxic substances into less harmful substances or degrade that contaminated uh, substances so this statement is false the next statement is bioenergy production can reduce reliance on fossil fuels and decrease green gas emission which is a true statement because bioenergy in the form of biofuels is very helpful in greenhouse house gas emission so this statement is true The next statement is bacteria can be used to create new materials and product from waste. As we have learned that we can make biomaterials from you from bacteria by using the waste. For example, bioplastics. So this statement is true. The next statement is fungi can break down pesticide into less harmful substances. as we have learned in microremediation that fungi can break down pesticide into less harmful substances so this statement is said to be true now we will discuss how biological processes can be used to remove or degrade environmental pollutants as well as the different strategies that can be applied depending on the specific type of pollutant and environmental conditions So there are different strategies for bioremediation which can be applied depending on the specific type of pollutant and environmental conditions the strategies are bioaugmentation biostimulation phytoremediation microremediation and bioreactor system bioaugmentation involves the introduction of microorganisms 
into the contaminant site to enhance the natural degradation of pollutants. Microorganisms can be obtained from the contaminant site itself or from other sources. Now the biostimulation. Biostimulation is the process in which we enhance the nutrient of the site by using different nutrients which also initiate the growth of the organism which are living in that particular contaminated area. Next is the phytoremediation. Phytoremediation involves the use of plants to remove or degrade pollutants from the environment. Plants can absorb and break down pollutants through their roots or they can enhance the growth of beneficial microorganisms in the soil. Several classification of schemes were found relating to the types of phytoremediation. The first one is phytovolatilization. It involves the uptake of contaminants by plant roots and its conversion to a gaseous state and release into the atmosphere. This process is driven by the evapotranspiration of plants. The next is the phytodegradation. Phytodegradation involves the degradation of organic contaminants directly through the release of enzymes from roots or through metabolic activities within the plant tissues. The next is the rhizofiltration. Rhizofiltration is the absorption, concentration and precipitation of heavy metals by plant roots. The next is the phytostabilization. It involves the absorption and precipitation of contaminants, principally metals by plant, reducing their mobility and preventing their migration to groundwater or air or entry into the food chain. The next is the phyto extraction. The extraction, this is the extraction and accumulation of contaminants in harvestable plant tissues including roots and surface shoots. The next one is the phytostimulation or plant assisted bioremediation. The stimulation of microbial and fungal degradation by release of exudates enzyme in the root zone that is rhizosphere. Microremediation. Microremediation involves the use of fungi to remove or degrade pollutant from the environment. Fungi have the ability to break down complex organic compounds such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and can be used to clean up contaminated soil and water sources. Next is the bioreactor system. Bioreactor system involves the use of a controlled environment such as a tank or a vessel to promote the growth and activity of microorganisms for the degradation of pollutants. Bioreactors can be used for the treatment of wastewater or the removal of pollutant from the soil. Now to clean up the soil we have different approaches. The first is the ex situ bioremediation, which involves slurry phase bioremediation and solid phase bioremediation. Slurry phase bioremediation involves the excavation and removal of the contaminated soil to a treatment facility where it is mixed with water and nutrient to create a slurry. The slurry is then treated with microorganisms, typically under aerobic conditions, to degrade the contaminants. Solid phase bioremediation, on the other hand, involves the treatment of the contaminated soil in place. This technique can be performed using several methods, including biostimulation and bioaugmentation. The solid phase bioremediation can be performed using aerobic or anaerobic conditions, depending on the type of contamination and the availability of the oxygen. The process can take several weeks to several months depending on the extent and type of contamination. Another approach is to, so, to soil clean up is in situ bioremediation in which we use biomanting. 
Bioventing is a technique used in power remediation to treat contaminated soil and groundwater. It is an in-situ bioremediation technique that involves the injection of air or oxygen into the contaminated soil to stimulate the growth of indigenous microorganisms that can degrade the contaminants. Bioventing is a cost-effective and environmentally friendly method for the cleanup of contaminated soil and groundwater as it allows for the treatment of the soil on site without the need of excavation or transportation. It can be used to treat variety of contaminants, including petroleum hydrocarbons, chlorinated solvents, and pesticides. The process involves the installation of a network of wells or vents into the contaminated soil, which are connected to a blower or compressor. Air or oxygen is injected into the soil, either continuously or intermittently, to provide the organisms with the necessary nutrients and oxygen to degrade the contaminants. The rate and duration of the air injections are carefully controlled to ensure that the soil does not become saturated and that the microorganisms have sufficient time to degrade the contaminants. Bioventing can be enhanced by the addition of nutrients such as nitrogen or phosphorus to the contaminated soil to stimulate the growth of the microorganisms. This process is known as biostimulation and can increase the rate of degradation of the contaminants. Now, we can apply genetically engineered strains to clean up the environment. For this, we have the first example, the petroleum-eating bacteria. Petroleum-eating bacteria, also known, in, known as hydrocarbonoclastic bacteria, are microorganisms that have the ability to degrade and consume petroleum and other hydrocarbon compounds as their primary source of energy and carbon. These bacteria are commonly found in oil contaminated environments such as oil spill, oil storage tanks, oil fields, they play an important role in the bioremediation of these contaminated sites by breaking down the hydrocarbon into several compounds that can be utilized by other microorganisms or assimilated into the environment. Some of the most well-known petroleum-eating bacteria include the members of genera Pseudomonas, Alcanivorex, Acinetobacter. These bacteria have been extensively studied and have been shown to possess a variety of enzymes that allow them to metabolize different types of hydrocarbons. But in addition, they, are, they can also be genetically engineered to enhance their performance of bioremediation that affect the cleanup of the soil contaminated area. While petroleum-eating bacteria have the potential to be used for bioremediation purposes, their effectiveness depends on a variety of factors, including the specific bacteria present, the type and concentration of the hydrocarbon, and the environmental condition present. In addition, some petroleum-eating bacteria may produce harmful byproducts such as methane, which can contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. Another example is the E. coli. E. coli is a type of bacteria that is widely used in biotechnology and research due to its well-characterized genetics and easy cultivation. While E. coli is not typically known for its ability to clean up heavy metals, researchers have explored the possibility of using this bacterium for this purpose. One approach involves genetic engineering of E. coli to express metal binding proteins or peptides on the surface which can bind and sequester heavy metals from contaminated environment. For example, researchers have engineered E. coli to express a metal binding protein called metallothionine, which is capable of binding to toxic metals such as cadmium and mercury. Another approach using E. coli is a part of bioremediation process where the bacteria are introduced to a contaminated environment and left to degrade or sequester the heavy metals over time. However, this approach is still in the early stages of research and more work is needed to optimize the condition for this 
process to be effective. Another example is the biosensors. Bacteria are capable of detecting a variety of environmental pollutants, including heavy metals, pesticides, and hydrocarbons. Many bacteria have developed the ability to sense it and respond to these pollutants as a survival mechanism, allowing them to adapt and thrive in contaminated environment. One example of bacteria uh, that is capable of detecting environmental pollutant is Escherichia coli, which has been engineered to detect and respond to a variety of environmental pollutants using synthetic biology approaches. E. coli has been modified to express specific receptors to recognize the target pollutants, which triggers a signaling pathway that produces a measurable output, such as fluorescence or color change. Now, what are the benefits of environmental biotechnology? The environmental biotechnology can offer several benefits, including cost effectiveness, sustainability, and the ability to address complex environmental problems. The one approach is the bioremediation that reduce the environmental impact of chemical treatment methods and promote the restoration of ecosystem. Now we have covered all these four topics. Just to review these topics, we have a little uh, activity in the next slide, which is choose the correct answer. So the first statement is dash involves the addition of nutrient or other substances to the contaminated site to enhance the growth and activity of indigenous microorganisms. We have learned these different approaches, biostimulation, bioaugmentation, phytoremediation, and microremediation in which the correct answer is biostimulation because by which we can enhance the growth and activity of indigenous microorganisms to clean the polluted area. The next statement is DASH involves the use of a controlled environment such as tank or vessel to promote the growth and activity of microorganisms for the degradation of pollutants. We have learned that by using a big bioreactor system, we can use control environment that enhance the growth of microorganism to bioremediate the contaminated area. So the answer is bioreactor system. The next statement is slurry phase bioremediation and solid phase bioremediation are the two techniques used in dash bioremediation we have discussed that to clean up the soil we have two different approaches the in situ and ex situ bioremediation but for the slurry phase and solid phase bioremediation we have ex situ bioremediation technique to remediate the soil Next statement is, DASH has been engineered to detect and respond to a variety of environmental pollutants using synthetic biology approaches. The most common bacteria which is used for different uh, approaches is E. coli. So the answer is E. coli. In conclusion, Environmental biotechnology is a promising field that has the potential to significantly contribute to sustainable development. Continued research and development in this field can lead to more effective and efficient solution to environmental problems. Thank you for listening and please feel free to ask any questions you may have. Thank you.